Maryland football can do damage with its 2024 schedule. You are Locked On Turks, your daily podcast on the Maryland Turks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everyone? I'm Trey Moore, video content creator for 247 Sports and InsideMarylandSports.com and host of Locked on Terps, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. So thank you for making us part of your day. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. New customers join today and you'll get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked on to get started. I want to talk a little bit about Maryland's 2024 schedule. I think the Terps can do a lot of damage next year with its 2024 schedule. I think it's a lot easier than the schedule has been. I want to take a break from basketball a little bit in terms of the first segment. I know that it's we're in basketball season, but I I want to talk a little bit about our football because I feel like our football team is doing a lot of exciting stuff. Coach Loxley just flipped the kid from Auburn. He had a really solid, I really loved how the 2024 class actually ended up. I thought we did a really good job getting Braden Lee, especially the secondary, Kevin Humes and Braden Lee, two four-star guys. We got a lot of really solid players. Brandon Jacobs, four-star safety. The secondary looks really good and some really good players at other spots. We did a good job in the portal, replenishing the offensive line, doing a lot of different things, bringing MJ Morse to make our QB room look a lot better with Talia gone. And I think we did a lot of things I liked personally, and I think a lot of people liked with this Maryland team. And I want to talk a little bit about this 2024 schedule. I think the Terps can do a little bit more damage than they have done in the past. I like the way the schedule looks. I want to get into a little bit. Of course, as you guys know, it's going to be a new format, a new schedule because of the new teams added to the Big Ten. You got USC, you got Oregon, you got Washington, you got UCLA, all added to the Big Ten, some really good teams in that mix, some really big brands, some exciting brands, some exciting places to play. You talk about USC going there, really cool place to play if you're going to play USC. You talk about Oregon, that's a big brand right now. USC, Oregon, two big brands. Washington, maybe not as big of a brand in terms of just like talking about college football history as a USC or an Oregon right now, but Washington just made it to the playoff last year, made it to the national championship game, just to lose to the eventual national champs in the championship, Michigan. So that's interesting. And then also UCLA is a solid program itself. So you add in four programs that are really top end type of programs to the Big Ten. You would think naturally, oh, that makes our schedule a lot harder. That's going to make things a lot harder to compete in the Big Ten. And in a ways, it will make it harder to win a Big Ten championship. But we do get rid of the conference divider. So there's no Big Ten East next year. And the Big Ten East was always better than the Big Ten West. It wasn't even like a question. The Big Ten East was just miles and miles above the Big Ten West. But now it's just going to be where teams have their schedule and the two top teams are in the Big Ten championship. So there's no Big Ten East. There's no Big Ten West because – Maryland being on the Big Ten East side with Ohio State, Penn State, and Michigan made it nearly impossible. Like that was almost three three losses for sure on Maryland's schedule. And this year the schedule I think looks a lot better because it was it was going to be really hard to take down a Michigan or Ohio State. Penn State I would say is a tick behind them, but still definitely a top end team on our schedule. Those three, just having those big three on your schedule to have any chance to win the Big Ten was just, it was unrealistic for the Terps to think that we had a shot at a Big Ten championship. But it's a little bit different now. I'd say if we were on the Big Ten West side, I I would have said that last year we could have competed to be in the Big Ten championship. But it's a lot different now with the different schedule. We don't have to play Michigan, Ohio State every single year and Penn State every single year because playing those three dogs, playing those three teams are very hard. Those three teams are probably going to be in the the new expanded college football playoff just about every year. I thought about Ohio, Ohio State. They've been one of the best teams in the country. Michigan just won the national championship. 
they were definitely probably you would say they're the best team in the country last year. I know some people would say maybe Georgia, if they would not have lost to Bama, could have beaten them. And I would agree with that. I think Georgia would have a, definitely would have a shot. I think it would, could have gone either way if Michigan and Georgia played. But right now, how it stands, we would have to say that Michigan was the best team in the college football uh, in college football in total and anyone out of college football, Michigan was the best team. So let's really get into the schedule. And by the way, we did give Michigan one of their toughest, um, their toughest games of the year. Maryland was up against Michigan and they, we had a shot to win that game, but our 2024 schedule is still tough, but I think Maryland can do damage. I think it's a lot better than it was before. If we really get into it. So we start the season with UConn, the season opener, and then we have Michigan state with UVA, Indiana and Northwestern. Those are the first couple of games. And I look at them and I say, Maryland, I think, can do some damage in those games. I think we should be able to win most of those games. And this is a way too early. kind of, It's not a prediction video, but it's just saying that we can do a lot. We can do some things with the schedule next year. I think, I think we could potentially be the favorite in basically all of those games, depending on how. I think the big, the big question mark is whoever is the quarterback next year, if they're playing at a pretty high level, I think we have a really – good team overall but between UConn Michigan State UVA Indiana Northwestern I think those are all teams that you look at that Maryland you could argue Maryland could win maybe they drop one but you could argue that Maryland should be able to win those type of games so the first five games are all very much winnable and but I want to talk about the back half of our schedule and I really want to dive into this instead of playing Michigan Ohio State and Penn State our big three this year is USC Oregon and Penn State. And in my opinion, that's a lot easier than playing Ohio State and Michigan because I think Oregon's doing some really good things and Oregon's going to be a really good team next year. But I think Ohio State and Michigan are both better, at least last year. I mean, next year is going to be a little bit different in terms of the look of things. Oregon could be a better team than Michigan next year. I could definitely see that. But in terms of how it's been, I think you would have to say Michigan and Ohio State. Ohio State is loaded next year. They look crazy. Not having to play them is great. But I would have to say that Ohio State and Michigan right now are better than are better than Oregon, are better than Penn State, and are better than USC. So those are two teams that we don't have to play now. And instead, we replace those with Oregon and USC. In USC, honestly, they aren't probably even going to be as good as we like kind of envision USC to be under Lincoln Riley. Last year, they weren't even that crazy good. Like they were, they were a good team, but a lot of the year they weren't in the top 25. They couldn't, they didn't really get things going last year. They couldn't really exactly figure things out. But if you look at it, USC won't have Caleb Williams. They're going to be a different team without Caleb Williams. They won't have him to save a lot of their games. And also they're moving to the big 10 and Big 10 teams can play defense and USC hasn't proven to be able to play defense yet. So can they stick in the, can they be a top team in the big 10 with the new change and kind of big 10 football? Can they be an upper echelon team in the big 10? I think USC is good, but I, I rather play USC than play Michigan or Ohio state. You cannot tell me you would rather play Mich or Michigan or Ohio state than play USC. I think USC is a good team. I think they have some solid stuff. They did a good job in the portal. Um, but I still rather play USC. I think, I think this USC team next year, I don't know exactly where they'll be ranked, but I don't think it'll be anything crazy. Like I don't think they'll be top 10 team. We'll see overall where they put them, but I don't know if I'm scared of this USC team. I don't, I mean, I'm not saying we're better than them, but I do think that's a game that we, could potentially win. I'm not 100% sure. I'm not like we're going to win that game. It's way too early, but I'd rather play USC than play Michigan or Ohio State. And then we go to Oregon and Penn State. Those are interesting games. It's like, hmm, I do think that we can do damage. I'd rather play Oregon right now than Ohio State next year. i rather play Penn, I'd rather play Penn State than Ohio State next year. Michigan's kind of an oddball to me. I don't really know what to think of them next year, but I'd much rather play those two teams than play Ohio State. I know Oregon's going to be really good, and those two are going to be the tricky games, but I still do like the schedule a lot more and think the Terps can do damage. Oregon Oregon has a real has a pretty good roster a lot or this year, and they had a pretty good roster last year under Bo Nix. But 
They did get the transfer quarterback from Oklahoma, so that'll be interesting how they break it, break him in. They got some other key guys. Dan Lanning is still there, and he's a really good coach overall. But I still rather play Oregon than play Ohio State or Michigan. That's just how I feel right now. That's just the way it is. And I know Michigan loses a lot. Michigan might not be that good next year. Like, I know they'll probably they'll be ranked probably what in the top six or seven just because they're national champs. But losing Harbaugh, they lose their quarterback McCarthy, they lose Corum, they lose got they lose guys up front, they lose Roman Wilson, they lose some guys on their defense for sure. A lot of guys on their defense. Michigan loses a lot, but I still feel like I'd rather play Oregon right now than Michigan. I think this schedule we can damage on. I'm looking at our first five games. And I'm saying we can do some things on if we play like four of those guys, if we play like USC, Oregon, and then Michigan and Penn State, I'd be like, this schedule is really hard. It is similar in a lot of ways, but I do think the Terps can do damage because I don't see USC as quite an elite team. I don't see them on the on the Michigan or the Ohio State level. And then I also don't think that Penn State, we haven't talked about Penn State. Penn State also isn't on that kind of Michigan, Ohio State level. They've never been that. They've done a great job playing us, and we never seem to match up well against them. But I'd rather play Penn State than play Michigan or Ohio State. I think we do a lot of damage. I think the schedule is a little bit easier. It's definitely not an easy schedule. It's definitely a, t- a pretty hard schedule. But I do like the schedule a lot more now than I did last year, and I think the Terps can do some damage. Let's switch gears. Maryland basketball struggles this year could have been avoided. I will tell you about how it could have been avoided after this ad from FanDuel. Happy Super Bowl to all who celebrate from FanDuel, America's number one sports book. If you're like me, Super Bowl Sunday is all about scoring the best seat on the couch, grabbing your favorite football stacks, and placing some super bets. Super Bowl Sunday is one of the best days of the year. It feels like a holiday. You grab your favorite food, whether it's like wings, the commercials are always really cool, and all that. Super Bowl Sunday is definitely one of the best days of the year, and I can't wait to watch it this year. And FanDuel has so many ways for you that for you to end the season with a dub or two or three. Not only can you bet on who wins Super Bowl 58, but FanDuel also has bets for which players will score a touchdown, how many points will be scored, and so much more. New customers join today, and you'll get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports book partner of the NFL. Maryland's basketball struggles this year could have been avoided. Some of our problems definitely didn't need to happen this year if Kevin Willard and the staff did a better job at keeping players. Our roster would have looked a lot better. In particular, Akeem Hart and Ian Martinez. It actually hurts my soul because I don't know why we couldn't keep these two. I mean, you kind of know why. Ian Martinez, I don't know. That was kind of a question mark. I guess Akeem Hart wanted to go to Villanova, thought he could do some good things there and needed a switch up. But you have to blame Kevin Willard and the rest of the staff for not being able to keep those two. Because this Maryland team is a completely different team right now if those two are in the roster. We are in a much better spot. We are better in basically every single way you put it with those two players. And seeing those two players, especially Ian Martinez, play really well, we could really use him right now. And so a lot of this season was lost before the season even started. And we underestimated the loss of those two because Ian Martinez wasn't like a huge impact player last year. But we knew he could take a step back, step up this year if he played for us. And then Akeem Hart was a starter last year. But look at what Ian Martinez is doing now. He is a really solid player over at Utah State. He's kind of tearing it up. We could use him right now. He could be a starter for sure right now. Utah State is the 22nd ranked team, and Martinez is a a huge part of that. He's doing some huge things over there right now. He's averaging 13.8 points per game. So basically he's at 14 points per game which I promise you we can use 14 points in our lineup right now. That would be good for second on our team right now in scoring 
right next to Julian Reese. He'd be a tad above Julian Reese in terms of scoring right now on our team. And we never thought that maybe Ian Martinez was like that good of a player where he could average 14 points for a top 25 team in the country. I don't think that's what we thought Ian Martinez was. But now looking at it, that we lost him, it hurts a lot, a whole lot to this Terrapin team, a team that struggles to score. He always provided energy, and now he looks like he expanded his game. Maybe, honestly, good for him for transferring. It was obviously a good decision for him, but for me to speak from my Maryland perspective, we needed to keep Ian Martinez. We needed to keep him around because clearly we need that scoring from someone else outside of Jameer Young carrying us. But but it's clear that he made the right decision. I think that's pretty obvious because now he's averaging 14 points per game and he's one of the main players on the team that's going to be probably like a four or five seed in March. So that's pretty exciting for Ian Martinez. I'm happy, honestly. It's good for him that he transferred since he has that bigger role now. But we got to say that. If we could have had him earlier, if we could have had him for this season, we could have looked a lot better. I think the team looks a lot different now. I think we're in a much better space if Ian Martinez is on our team. He would be our starting two guard right now, I think. I think you, he could kick Deshaun Harris Smith to the bench, and I think Ian Martinez would be a good player to start. I could see Kevin Willard still starting Deshaun Harris Smith at the beginning of the season, but I don't know. With the data we have now, I think it's pretty obvious that Ian Martinez could be a starter for us. Akeem Hart definitely could be a starter for us. He was a starter for us last year, and letting him go definitely hurt. We didn't let him go exactly, but I don't know. Not being able to retain him definitely is hurting us right now. We definitely could use a player like Akeem Hart in the three spot. I think our lineup, that that would be our lineup right now. I think it would be Julian Reese at the five, Dante Scott at a small ball four, Akeem Hart at the three, Ian Martinez at the two, and Jameer Young at the one. You kick Deshaun Harris-Smith and Jordan Geronimo to the bench, and then you look a lot more deep. But right now, Akeem Hart is playing pretty – he's playing a role for Villanova. That's what I would say. He's playing a role. He's averaging 7.4 points per game. He averaged 11.4 points per game with us. So I'm not saying it was the best move for him. He's not doing bad, but he definitely could have had a bigger role with this Maryland team. But when we think about that that starting five that I said with Akeem Hart – starting at the three and Ian Martinez starting at the two. And then we have Dante Scott at the four and then Julian Reese at the five team looks a lot better. To be honest, it looks a lot better. And that's why I say the struggles of this year and how much we have struggled to put things together and how things have not been looking the best a lot this year. A big part of it was before the year even started. And the thing was we all as fans and players that watch or people that watch we underestimated the loss of those two players. Maybe, I mean, people definitely talked about it. It was talked about. But there's a reason people chose us to finish top three in the Big Ten. People thought we could overcome the loss of those two overall. And people thought those two weren't big losses. And I think Maryland fans kind of knew that it was a bigger loss than what people thought. But people did think that those two weren't big losses. And they thought with bringing in Kaiser and bringing in – Deshaun Harris-Smith, they thought we would be okay. But I think those losses could have been avoided this year if we were able to hold on to those two players. Because I think those are top-of-the-line players right now. And then Ian Martinez is also shooting a really solid percent from the three-point arc. And we know who Kim Hart can shoot the three ball. He did it last year, too. So I think those two could offer floor spacing, which we need right now. And I hate talking about kind of the pass and like a pass mistake, but I wanted to make sure I talked about this because I do think right now we would be a lot better of a team. I think we'd be a top 25 team if we had those two players in the lineup. I think we're – we had, we're way more deep. If you push Deshaun Harris Smith to the bench, you push Jordan Geronimo to the bench. I like that a lot more. I like those two coming off the bench a lot more for the offense. I think we can do a lot better things if those two were on the bench. But let's move on. Let's move on to still stick to some basketball. I'm going to talk about Jamie Kaiser and Jonathan Lameau, something that I think Kevin Willard should do with them. I will tell you about that after this ad from the Game Time app. 
Have you ever wanted to go to a game at the last minute, like a Maryland's hairpins game, but finding tickets is hard? I've been there before. Buying tickets to your favorite events shouldn't be stressful. Game time is a fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, comedy, and theater near you. With killer deals on last minute tickets and their best price guaranteed, you can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for the fun you'll have. Game time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event, and even an hour after it starts. It's a place to find last-minute seats. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Right now, all Game Time users get $100 off a big game ticket with code VEGAS100. Terms apply. Just download the Game Time app and use code VEGAS100 for $100 off a big ticket. So I was thinking about these Maryland young players. And I think Jamie Kaiser and Jonathan Lamoth need big minutes down the stretch. Here's the reason why. Obviously, Kaiser's been playing. Kaiser has been getting minutes a lot. He needs to be a lot more consistent with the minutes he's been playing. He's been up and down this year for sure. He's probably been maybe our most inconsistent player. You could argue him. You could argue Deshaun. You could argue a couple guys on this team. But he's been playing the most inconsistent minutes on the team. Rutgers, he had 26 minutes. Michigan State, he had 11 minutes. Nebraska, he had six minutes. His minutes are all over the place. He needs to be playing, I would say, about 18, 20 minutes a night. I would like him to be at at this point in the season. I want to give him confidence. I don't want him to be scared of his minutes and have been thinking about that and say, if I'm not making shots, they're not going to play me. I want him to be confident and I want him to play no matter what. As an athlete, as an athlete right now, I can tell you that when when you're a scared of what a coach is going to do if you don't shoot the ball well, if you turn over the ball, you're not going to play well. If you don't have confidence that your coach is going to stick with you no matter what, it's a lot harder to get in the right mental spot. So I think, John, I think, excuse me, Jamie Kaiser should be playing at 18, 20 minutes, no matter how he's shooting, no matter how he's playing, he should play those minutes. And then I'm looking at Jonathan Lamothe. I think he needs time down the stretch. I think there's no reason really not to play him at this point. I think you look at this season, and for both Kaiser and Lamoth, you look at this season, and you say, this season's kind of over. To be completely honest, I'm going to get into that more on another day. But March Madness is its not going to happen. I know it was like I thought for a second maybe we could possibly get in. Maybe we could find a way to snuggle our way into, twist our way into March Madness, find our way in after going on a pretty unrealistic win streak at the end of the year. And winning some games we weren't going to probably – we aren't going to win. And after this two-game losing streak, losing to Michigan State, losing to Rutgers, it's pretty clear that we're not going to march. We're not a March Madness team. I don't really – it w- it should have never been a thought. I know we have to talk about it, but I talked about it. A lot of people talked about it. It, it was never going to be that this year. We're just not good enough, to be honest. We're not a good enough team. We depend on one player really to make a lot of plays. And we can't shoot the ball well enough. We're good enough defensively. That's about it. We're, we're probably not well, co- well coached enough. I don't know. We're just not. We're not good enough this year for March. So I'm looking at Jonathan Lamoth, and I'm saying, what's the point of not playing him down the stretch? He's a young kid. I think he could help if he could get some minutes. Because let's be real about some of these freshmen, and really anyone on the team. If things aren't going right, I think this thing with Noah Bachelor as well. If things aren't going right. These guys will transfer. They don't have any loyalty. If they don't feel like they're getting minutes, if they don't feel like they're playing, these guys will easily say, I'm going somewhere else. And I don't want Jonathan Lamoth to leave because I think he can be a good player down the stretch. And I think you give Jonathan Lamoth a chance to play over these next couple of games. Maybe it's a couple more games to make sure after maybe a couple more losses. But I think he will. I think Kevin Wood will start to play him more. And also it's the fact that a young player in Deshaun Harris-Smith, the freshman, hasn't played well at all. And so it's kind of a bad look. And I don't know the ins and outs. I don't know how Lamoth looks in practice. But it doesn't look great when Deshaun Harris-Smith has started every single game and has looked pretty bad at times. Has looked pretty bad. Looked like he can't shoot the ball as a freshman. And we're not giving Lamoth a chance to play at all. I'm not going to say it's like favoritism or anything, but I think you got to give Lamoth a chance. If you're going to stick with Deshaun Harris-Smith, um, even though he hasn't played well, which I like that. I like sticking with players who don't ruin their confidence. But I think you got to give Jonathan Lamo some time down the stretch. Does that have to be a lot? Give him 10 minutes here or there. Give him five minutes each half. I, I, I want to play him a little bit, see what he can do. And I think that less that helps the 
the players not wanting to transfer as much if they get minutes down the stretch. It's still definitely transfer. It's definitely in definitely in play for anybody on this team after this year, how this year went. But I, I think it helps definitely. That's all we have for today. Thank you for listening to Locked on Terps. Make sure you like and subscribe. We're here every day talking Maryland football and basketball. So thank you for listening to Locked on Terps.